So you did, you had a, the largest um, online summit uh, in Africa, 15,000 people, right? Yes. So it's a whole business model. And it's interesting because we haven't covered this yet. And in the time of COVID-19, a lot of people have been having online webinars, online summits, online presentations, online everything, online schools. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's turned into a revenue model, a mm-hmm. revenue stream. You can make money on it. So, yeah, let's dissect yours. So, all right, yours was called Head Start Africa Summit. Head Start Summit. Head Start Summit. Okay. So, you, so yeah, yes. can you can you kind of walk walk us through the the, the summit? So Head Start Summit, our theme for this year was reinventing yourself for the new global economy. So there was a lot of pessimism about the COVID-19 era. And so people were losing their jobs. Some brick and mortar businesses had to close for a while. And there was a lot of pessimism and the mood was really low. And so we had to teach people how they could reinvent themselves um, in the travel industry, in the hospitality business, how people could reinvent themselves for the new global economy because everything of necessity had to move online. And so I got 17 speakers, most of whom are my colleagues in the speaking industry. And we held a summit for three days, six hours every day from now. It was from like 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. every day for three days. And so we had about 50,000 people who actually registered for the summit, but about 15,000 showed up And uh, this was a different kind of summit. Most virtual summits take the easy route. I mean, no disrespect, but that's pretty easy to record it and put it up, schedule the content out. But we wanted to put it out there live. And so all the sessions were streamed live to YouTube. And um, most of the sessions averaged a live viewership of about 3,000 live viewers. So um, I haven't seen those numbers um, ever. (laughs) at least on this side. I haven't even seen that anywhere around the world, but I, I don't want to brag. I'll just talk about this <laughs> for now until I, can, <laughs> uh, uh, until, um, until I can verify those numbers. And so, but um, th- there, there's a, a science to that. So th- there's a way that virtual summits can be monetized and there's an entire business model around that, which I'd like to share with a lot of people and how anyone can use that to blow up their business, especially if you have a business that is involved in teaching people something. You you sell online courses, you sell books, you sell audio, and you want to drive a lot of attention almost instantly to your business and monetize all that attention. Um, there's an entire business model. A lot of things that we learned doing this, um, um, running the summit and monetizing it, and that's what I would like to share with a lot of people here. Yeah. So how how long did it take to plan an event like this? That's all. I mean, fifteen thousand people is a lot. You have fifty thousand registered. How long did it take to plan something like that, and what goes into it when you're trying to plan? Right. So this normally would take me about a month to plan. But so here's the thing. Uh, So um, it usually takes about a month, but we planned it in 10 days. So uh, the president of Nigeria was due to give a speech about whether or not the lockdowns would be lifted. And so I told my team that, look, there's a good chance that the the lockdowns would be lifted pretty soon. We've got to run this while everyone's still at home. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's I didn't want to take a whole month to plan it out. I wanted to, to have the summit run while everyone was still at home so that we'd have all that attention. they will be at home. Everyone would tune in, would have all that attention. So instead of a month, we had to crunch it down to 10 days. And so we had to plan and execute in just 10 days. Yeah, so just 10 days. So, um, the, so. What went into planning that? First of all, we had to build an audience. We had to run a lot of ads and let people know that a virtual summit was happening. But not just any kind of virtual summit, it was one that was relevant to what was going on, and that's the COVID-19 era. And one that was offering a solution to the current problem, the economic realities of a lot of people who were losing their jobs. And we also had to invite people that everyone knew. We invited the most recognizable faces in Nigeria, for for that virtual summit i think a couple of them were in the us i think like two of our speakers were in the us but most of the faces were recognizable these are people who have been given solutions in nigeria for a very long time and so people saw this as very credible everyone registered but an important thing that went to the planning was the choice of platforms so a lot of people have i've seen a lot of virtual summits happen on instagram live instagram live is not a great place to hold uh, a summit or any serious virtual event 
And, and you know, in, in online marketing, we have a saying that do not build your house on rented land, mm. right? And most of social media is rented land. So we have a lot of people who lose their Instagram accounts or their Facebook accounts, and there's no way to recover that audience. They'd have to start building again from scratch. And so though social media is important, you've got to find a way to offload those people that follow you online onto a platform that you own and control, and that is your email list, right? So that's the first thing that we did. So social media, it's a great place, but it's like a marketplace where everyone comes, you do a business, and you go home. So while you're in that marketplace, you've got to be able to take as many people in that marketplace home with you. That's the analogy that I could use. So we ran a lot of ads, put out a lot of publicity on Instagram, but we said, look, in order to get access to the live sessions, you would have to register on a certain page. Hit the link in our bio, and so we started running that publicity. So we use that to build a huge email list, right? So here's the flow. We use that to build a huge email list. but Here's another mistake a lot of people make. Um, after putting them on the email list, people, a lot of people who hold virtual summits depend on the email broadcasts to bring people to attend. And if you do a lot of email marketing, you would see how low the open rates are a lot of times. So a person might be opening an email when the event is over. So you need to choose a platform that sends instant notifications to your registered members, right? So we not only took their email addresses, we put them onto this platform called Telegram. I'm not sure if Telegram is a, it's, it's, it's a huge thing in, in, in America, yeah, we but use it. It, it's really, oh, you, oh, cool. Yeah. So Telegram, Telegram and WhatsApp are huge in Africa, really huge. So, but the greatest, the best thing about Telegram, here's the best thing about Telegram, especially Telegram channels, because Telegram has two sides of this, Telegram groups and Telegram channels. Right. But Telegram channels, you can have all your subscribers receive a push notification whenever you make a post. That is very difficult to achieve on regular social networks. So if you made a post on Instagram, you would have to hope that, that someone would find your post while casually scrolling through their newsfeed on, on Instagram or on Facebook. But with Telegram, once I make a post, I, um, we have um, a number of Telegram channels now about about 30,000 people across all our Telegram channels. If I made a post right now, at least half of those people would see it instantly because it sends them a push notification. So that is the best approach if you're looking to hold a live summit. I mean, if you're doing something like a blog post, you could put it out there and just hope that they'd find it. But if you need people's attention now, instantly, you have to use a platform like Telegram. And so that's what we use. So the flow was this. Hit the link in our bio, register. They got the link in our bio. They registered. We got their email. We sent them follow-up emails, but we specified that they had to join the Telegram channel. And so that's how we populated the Telegram channels. And from the Telegram channels, whenever we had a live session, we'll just broadcast the link and we had this influx of people all at once. And so people were wondering, how are you able to gather all these eyeballs all at once to watch a live broadcast? Especially, you know, this is Africa when people are using limited internet <laughs> connectivity, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but you're still, able to, to, you're still able to bring them to watch hours and hours of broadcasts live. And so that was uh, the exact flow that we used. From social media, offload them to your email list. From your email list, get them onto a platform like Telegram where they can receive instant push notification. And then you'll have all those eyeballs whenever you have a live broadcast. It's it's that simple. Nothing complicated about it. It's it's, it's that simple. So, so that was the flow. No, the, the Telegram. I'm, I'm trying to think. It, it doesn't take as much megabytes as as a typical like if I was watching on YouTube. So the 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 live stream doesn't happen on Telegram. It happens on YouTube. Oh, okay, got you. Right. Telegram yeah, is just a notification. The Telegram is to pull them onto YouTube. Got you. So yeah. All right, but, so, that, so that's, that's the first part as far as getting the people um, together. But you, you talked yeah. about as far as the business model, how to actually monetize it, because I'm assuming it's free, right? Like you did the free, it was free? Yes. So how do you, how yes. do you, so how do you monetize it? How, how, does, how does that work? Right, so there are multiple ways to monetize it. The, the most obvious way is by selling the recordings. So it's put out there that you know the live sessions are free, but the recordings are not. And so you get all that attention, everyone watches the live streams, but they cannot download 
the streams, the recordings are then sold. That's the most obvious business model that we use to monetize. But there are other ways. So we also sell classes, um, specialized workshops. So the, the beauty of all that attention is that once you have all that attention and you're giving value to all those viewers, anything that you sell to those people carries a lot of weight. So we, we had a lot of our, our guests who came on to speak and they had affiliate programs for, for their products. And at the end of their sessions, I would come on live with them to help pitch their products. They would sell and we would get a commission, right? So the affiliate business model was there. The sales of the recordings was there. And then our own, of our own specialized workshops and classes, that one also sold. So we, we sold specialized classes in artificial intelligence, um, online sales, marketing, cryptocurrency, and so on. We sold all those ones with the attention, and th those ones also drove revenue. So th those are multiple ways. If you also, if you have a book, you have a course, you have a specialized workshop, the that's the best time to sell that sort of thing because you've been able to attract all those eyeballs to one spot. You've been able to build a lot of credibility by giving value upfront. So almost instantly, they know, like, and trust you, and they're willing to buy almost anything that is of value to them. Now, that's dope. Um, and yeah, going back to the WhatsApp thing, WhatsApp is extremely big overseas. Um, when I'm saying overseas, I'm talking about America. I, just, I realized that when I started to um, you know, have different friends from different countries and even you, that's how I contact yeah. you. And that's how we communicate is WhatsApp. And um, so yeah. when Facebook brought WhatsApp years ago for 19 billion, it was kind of weird because it's like they, they brought um, Instagram for only 1 billion, but the communication channels um, in other parts of the world, because WhatsApp is not really huge like that in America, but I realized okay. that in like Europe, Africa, pretty much everywhere Every, outside, outside of America, yeah. WhatsApp is, is huge. It's a huge communication channel. And then Telegram... Um, shout out to Ian. Ian, he's uh he does our stock show with um Market Mondays is our stock show and he has a Telegram group and he's real big on Telegram. So what you're saying pretty much is like you gotta diversify even your 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 ways of communication. Like you can't just do yeah. anything through one channel. So it's like you you use Instagram as the first barrier to like because yeah. you know that's where most people are. And then you yeah. and then you move them from Instagram to Telegram, which is another kind of social network kind of thing, but it's yeah. better because yeah. now you can actually have push notifications. And then from Telegram, they sign up to the website, and then from the website, then they can watch it on YouTube. Then from YouTube, yes. if you don't watch it, you can or you can jump off and buy the course or go yeah. to the affiliate program. So it's now it's like seven different steps. In, yes. in the whole process. Yeah, and it goes back to what yes. you said about being on rented land. Like if Instagram stopped, yeah. you still got your Telegram group. If Telegram stopped, you still yes. got your email list on your website. If that stops, you still yeah. got the YouTube. So being on rented land, yeah. that you, it, it, it works out perfectly for you. Yeah, yeah. Nah, that's a vibe. And um, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of like, you know, similar to what we see in America. A lot of different people do affiliate programs. I was going to ask you if you paid the speakers, but... I guess for the most of them, you didn't really have to pay because they was going to be able to make money on their courses that they sold on the back end, right? Yeah. 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 No matter where you're at in the world, the same, it's the same language. It's the same language, It's the man. same language, man. We always speak the same language. <laughs> yeah. I, That's a fact. My graduates from my school being Forbes. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>